What's cooking, Timberwolves? All right, happy May the 4th. This week, we're all about Star Wars. We have to celebrate it, of course. Um, my kids got in on it. That's why you got all these decorations. Um, and May the 4th is always in reference to May the 4th be with you with Star Wars. Um, so these recipes are themed around, but even if you do not like Star Wars or you do not know what Star Wars is, <clears throat> you can still make these recipes and enjoy them. They're really, really good. This one in particular is a crab favorite. Um, I have done this in all of my rotations thus far. Those of you guys who have already done this recipe, you guys know that this is seriously such a good one. This is of course Princess Leia's buns or uh, <laughs> cinnamon pinwheels. Now this recipe is awesome because it does not require yeast. It comes together really, really fast and they taste amazing. Like they really, really taste good. Um, I'm only gonna be doing the original recipe, which is only gonna be making six, but trust me, you're probably gonna want to double this one. Now, if you've already done this recipe um, in one of my rotations, I'm gonna expect you to really kick it up, do something really cool with it. Um, you can always add chocolate chips to this inside the filling. You can do a lot of stuff. Um, but basically this recipe is biscuit dough, um, slathered in butter or margarine, and then with some amazing cinnamon sugar uh, filling on top, okay? So it's, it's good, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, before we get going, I'm gonna show you the recipe. I have included um, icing on this recipe as well. If you would like to make it a little bit fancier, you can always throw uh, cream cheese in also, um, and it tastes um, you could probably do about 125 cream cheese and just uh, 125 milliliters or half a cup of cream cheese and just blend it together. Um, I will be showing you how I make my really easy icing, which is basically icing sugar and milk, but it's completely optional. These cinnamon buns or these pinwheels are sweet enough as is, um, and so you don't need a lot more sugar, but again, some people are like, I want all the sugar, okay? So let's get going. Here is the recipe. And then there's the icing. And again, for this icing, if you wanted to add vanilla, you totally can. Um, it, it, this is just basic, so you can add whatever you want to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good one. So I will be starting my hand washing process and I've, I've got all of my rings off, all of my watches off, everything, because I will be kneading this. This is a biscuit dough. Um, and so I will get dirty, okay? So keep that in mind. 20 seconds on hot water. And I will be doing this um, higher temperature or baking this at a higher temperature because it is a quick rise. Biscuits are a quick rise recipe. Um, so I'm gonna set my um, oven to convection 400. And you guys, if you have it at bake, will be 425. So please also make sure that your oven racks are in the center so that your tops don't get too brown before, um, sorry, before your bottoms are cooked. <laughs> and away we go. All right, so we're gonna start off with a basic biscuit recipe, which is uh, flour, salt, and baking powder. And for biscuits, basically what happens is um, you mix together your dry ingredients, you cut in your cold fat. So I just took this out of the fridge. You wanna make sure that it's cold. Um, and this is a pre-measured 60 milliliters. Um, if you've got baking uh, squares, so if you've got margarine and squares, all you're gonna do is cut it in half. It's 125, so, so technically it's 62.5, um, but it is the perfect amount. And then you're gonna cut it into a square, like you'll have half a square and you'll cut that in again uh, to have the filling amount, okay? So it works really, really well with those squares. If not, measure it out with your measuring spoons, okay? Um, you will need to do it that way because it is a solid fat, all right? Okay, so away we go. And for this one, again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got a clear space, you wipe down your countertop, okay? Because we will be uh, kneading on our countertop and we will be turning it out onto our countertop so it needs to be clean and dry, all right? So 
Oh, I've got my 250. I've got my big bowl. I've got a small bowl. And then I've also got a microwave safe bowl because I will be uh, softening my margarine before I spread it, okay? Um, and this is gonna be for my filling, okay? So I'm gonna deal with my dough right now. 250 goes in, and then I'm gonna add um, just a little bit extra in order to be able to roll it out afterwards. Then I've got my salts and my baking powder. So for baking powder, I am gonna do uh, seven milliliters. So I'm gonna do five and two. You can hear my cat in the background. She is fine. She just doesn't like to be caged in. We're not torturing her or anything like that. And then I'm going to get my one milliliter of salt. And put it up. All right, so before I start cutting into my fat, what I'm going to do is I am going to be mixing this with my utility fork just to make sure I don't have any lumps. And I'm gonna be putting this off to the side. Okay, now I just realized that I forgot my rolling pen, so I'm gonna grab that. together my 40 milliliters of brown sugar and my three milliliters of cinnamon. Do not add in your margarine to this amount. Two separate bowls, okay? Um, it works better that way. You will have enough filling that way, so please don't, okay? So for the 40 of brown sugar, I'm going to grab my 15 and my 25 because together those add up. And again, I'm going to pack and then level off. And if I do it on my container, um, I don't even need to level it, okay? And I'm gonna put that in my bowl. She is, my cat is really going for it. Okay, uh, I am that. Gonna put this on. And I'm gonna grab my three, or my two and my one, or my cinnamon, or you can just take my two and do one, two, and then half of my two, which I think I'm gonna do. All right, so I've got all of my cinnamon, it's in there. So I'm actually gonna take my utility fork again, or you can take the back of your utility spoon and you can kind of smush down your brown sugar. But since I haven't actually dirtied this, my ingredients. I'm just going to mix this together. And for me, this does make the perfect amount of filling. Okay, I don't need to double it or anything unless I'm doubling the recipe. And that is that. Okay, so I've got that. That's ready to go. And then I can get my other ingredients ready to roll as well. And I'm actually just going to put my butter in there because I will be softening it. Okay. I'm going to cut in my fat. So I'm going to take my handy dandy uh, pastry blender. If you do not have a pastry blender, grab a really sturdy fork, okay? And then just cut in your fat with that, right? So I'm going to unwrap this. And I'm going to start cutting this in. So I'm just going to slightly turn my bowl as I go. And I shouldn't even really have to touch these pieces, but my goal is to get small coarse crumbs or pea-like pieces of my margarine. And I want to see these chunks of margarine in there. Okay, I do not want this melted. I don't want it to form like a thick mass. I want these to be floured covered pieces of margarine. And if I need to, I can always grab my fork 
and just run it along my pastry blender just to uh, knock anything out of the way. And I usually end up tipping this on the sides of my bowl or running it along the sides of my bowl because I find that it just mixes everything together really well. All right, so you guys see these pieces? I've got these beautiful pieces of margarine covered in flour. Okay, and that's what I want. For when I have biscuits, I always want to see the chunks of butter. Okay, so to this, in order to make my biscuit dough, I'm going to add liquid. Now your recipe says 85. I usually find that I end up using 100. So I'm actually gonna pour 100 milliliters, but totally dependent on the type of flour that you have. Um, yeah, like it's, biscuit dough is one of those things where you might need more, might need less, okay? So again, when I measure my liquids, I always go down to eye level and I go slightly above to allow for the meniscus to dip down. Um, so I've got my uh, liquids here, I've got my fork, okay? And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly add in liquid, but not all at once. Okay, because I don't know if I need all of this liquid. All right, so I'm going to pour in about a quarter and start to mix. And what I want to see is my dough to start pulling away from the sides of my bowl. Now, my goal with this is to create a slightly sticky dough so that when I turn this out onto my floured surface, it's not too dry. So it is starting to form. Ooh, that was loud. And when I get to the point where it's really starting to kind of stick together, I'm gonna to start to use my hands. All right, so I think my fork is about done. And I'm gonna get in there. And again, I want it to stick together in a ball. That's my goal. And it's gonna be like a shaggy dough because I have not kneaded it yet. So I just want it to clump together and I might actually need more. Hmm. But again, you know what? Some days it takes less, some days it takes more. Totally dependent on like the weather, just a variety of factors. So I am going to see if I can get a little bit more out of this. Yeah, it's really dry. So I'm going to add just a little bit more and I'm not going to dump my milk straight into here. Okay. I'm going to pour it just a tiny bit because I don't think I'll need that much. So it's slightly sticky, it is sticking to my hands, which is fine. I am going to flour down my hands, okay, when I turn out, um, so I will be okay. All right, so I've got my workspace, okay, I wanna make sure that it's clear. And then I can roll it out. And I will still be using my metal spatula if you guys do not have a metal spatula, again, you guys can use the back of a butter knife and I'll actually be using it to cut up my pieces, okay? If you do not have one of those, um, you can also use a string and what you'll do is you'll just slide it under and then slice it through. It's really fun to do, um, but I'm just gonna use my metal spatula. All right, so I'm gonna take my flour that I got earlier and I'm going to put it onto my surface. I'm going to flour down my hands and flour down my rolling pin. Okay, so I'm gonna turn out, which means turning out literally. And I'm going to scrape down my bowl because I want this to be an easy process to clean. And if I've got a pastry scrape, I'm gonna use that on my bowl. Okay, now I'm gonna knead. Okay, so when we knead, basically our goal is to kind of stretch the gluten but not overstretch it. Um, and we're gonna need eight to 10 times, okay? So I am gonna fold, quarter turn, fold in, stretch, quarter turn, and stretch. And let's see if I can get these pieces to behave. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
seven and eight, okay? So there's my flat, smooth dough, all right? I do not wanna over knead. If I over knead, this is gonna be really, really tough to roll out and I don't want that, all right? So eight to 10 times, that's it. And actually this only took eight times um, and now I'm ready to roll out, all right? Okay, so please don't over, I've seen a lot of over kneading. Okay, so I've got my rolling pin. I'm now going to roll this out into basically what looks like an oval rectangle, okay? Um, and I don't want it too massive because I've only got six muffin tins that I'm going to be baking this in. And I do bake these in muffin tins because it bakes really, really fast um, and it's easy and it rises really well. Um, and you don't even need to spray down your muffin tins because you've got enough butter in this recipe for you to be able to scoop out afterwards, okay? So I'm gonna take my rolling pin and I'm just going to roll this out. And I still can see those chunks of butter in there, which is awesome. And if it starts to stick to my rolling pin, I'm just gonna flour down my rolling pin again and again. You need to make sure that your dough is movable. If your dough starts to stick to the edge when you cut it out, you'll lose your dough, okay? All right, so this is a pretty good shape, okay? So I'm gonna use this. Again, it's kind of like an oval rectangle, okay? Um, and that's really what you're going for. And again, you can stretch it out still while you're um, doing your filling, so. Don't worry about it too much, okay? So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, filling. So I'm gonna take my butter and I'm just gonna soften it for 15 seconds. I'm actually gonna wash my hands as well. not melted all the way okay and I should be able to just mix it with my butter knife you can take a pastry blender or a butter knife and you're then going to spread it so I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to spread it over top I don't know if you can hear that, that's my son. And I wanna go all the way to the edges on this. Hmm. Let's see if I can get some more butter out of here. Sorry about the sound. I know a lot of you guys don't like scratching. I actually might end up melting more butter. This is a first for me. I usually never have to melt more butter. Oh well, I have some more, so might as well. All right, 15 seconds. Actually, maybe I'll do 10. You want to go right down to all of the edges. Make sure you're fully covered. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take my filling, dump it, and then I'm going to spread it. And again, I want this to go all the way to the edges. And this does make enough to cover. 
perfect. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch and roll. So I'm gonna take the bottom half, which is the longest half, okay? Um, or the longest edge, and I am going to pinch it and roll it. So I want it to be pretty even. Okay, so I'm actually, what I call this is squatting. So just basically uh, tipping in the edges. And I want this roll to be even, okay? So my goal is not to have like fat here, thin here, because I want them to bake evenly. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take my um, metal spatula and I'm actually gonna mark it into six pieces. Don't just cut or else you'll have like one massive one and one tiny one. Um, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, oh, four, and five. And that'll give me six even, evenly distributed uh, cinnamon pin mills. So I'm gonna cut, when I cut, I'm gonna take the cut side up. I'm gonna just press it down just a little bit because they will rise in the oven. And again, you do not need to um, grease your pan or anything, because these come straight out afterwards. Gonna take this and I'm just going to place it into my oven. And I'm going to bake it for between 12 to 15 minutes. And I should see it golden brown. Okay, so you're kind of you're going to be looking for the same things you would with a biscuit: golden brown and firm to the touch. Okay, so when I come back, what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna take these out and then I'm gonna show you guys how to mix up your icings. 